Ireland is full of ghost stories, and one of the most famous of them all is the story of a ghost who returned to the living world with the sole intention of righting a wrong. What makes this ghost story so famous and memorable is because James Haddock was acknowledged and celebrated by the Bishop of the time, Dr. Jeremy Taylor. This gave the story a very strong foundation to be passed down through the years as an Irish ghost story. James Haddock was a farmer who lived outside of Belfast. James died in the year 1657, but after his death, his spirit had returned to the land of the living to avenge those who did him wrong. James Haddock had made a will that those who should inherit his manor house and farm were his wife Arminel, his young son John Haddock, was to receive the rest of it once he reached the age of 21. Mr. Davis was the name of the executor of James's will. Davis married James's wife Arminel a few years after James's death. It was then was the start of the reason for James's spirit to start his haunting, as after James's death, Mr. Davis changed James's will, where he put his own son as the beneficiary instead of John Haddock, who was the rightful heir. Davis would have got his own way only for the haunting of James Haddock. It started one night during September. James's friend Francis Taverner was on his way home to Hilborough. Nothing was out of the ordinary until suddenly his horse stopped on the drum bridge near Brombeg. Taverner wondered what was wrong, but didn't think much of it, so just got off his horse and led him across the bridge. Suddenly he got a start when he saw a figure in a white coat appear right in front of him. Francis couldn't believe his eyes because the white figure in front of him looked exactly like his friend James Haddock who had passed away five years before. Francis was shocked to the core when the ghostly figure begged him to make sure his son was the rightful owner of the land that was due to him. Francis refused and jumped on his horse and raced away like a racehorse. Francis heard a very strong wind and screeches almost like a banshee when all of this was happening. Francis was happy to arrive home and as soon as he did he fell down on his knees and prayed to God to protect him from whatever he just saw. The next night Francis still wasn't over the shock of seeing his friend's ghost when he suddenly saw him again as he was sitting by the fire with his wife. He was disappointed his wife could not see the ghost and wondered why. James Haddock begged and pleaded with Francis that he has to go to his wife to persuade her to make sure his son gets what is due to him and what is rightfully his. He begged for him to make sure justice was done and to right the wrong. Francis once again refused to offer any help and due to it he was visited by James Haddock's ghost every single night for a month. Francis was in a very bad place and knew he had to get away from it all, so he fled to Belfast, but to his horror the ghost had followed him. He didn't know what to do. The ghost was getting more and more aggressive and was now demanding Francis go back to Arminal and punish her in the worst way for her terrible treatment of their son John. Francis was shocked and scared more than ever as the ghost warned him that if he didn't do what he was told, there would be extreme measures taken. 
Francis Taverner knew he had to confide in someone and couldn't think of anyone else to go to for help besides his local chaplain. Francis explained the whole story from the very first time he saw the ghost on the bridge to the night before. When the chaplain was told not long after he had the whole story, he then went to visit Dr. Lewis Downs, who was the vicar of Belfast at the time. The three men went to see Davis to explain the ghost's message and demand. Davis laughed at the men as if he was just told a very funny joke. He refused to make any change to the will and refused to give up any land. After none of what was done so far worked, the ghost of James Haddock had told Francis Taverner to take the matter to court. Francis knew that this would be farcical because one, they would laugh at the idea of a ghost and two, there was no witness. The ghost must have known Francis's worry. As he said, don't worry about them not believing you, for I will appear myself in the court when you are the judge or whoever calls upon me, I shall appear. The court was held in Carrick Fergus and it was under the title, The Court Case, to return the estate to John Haddock. The opposing counsel mocked and jeered the idea and began to call for James's ghost to appear. He started shouting in a mocking tone, James Haddock, James Haddock, James Haddock. On the third mention of James's name, he received a ghostly, creepy, out of this world response. Reports circulated that then, in that very moment, there was a huge clap of thunder and the courtroom shook as if there was an earthquake. And to make matters worse, a hand appeared in the witness box and a voice from beyond this world asked, is this enough? After that, the court case was settled almost immediately. Davis left the courthouse where crowds of onlookers shouted abuse at him. He just wanted to go home, but he never did get home. The reason Davis never reached home is because as he was riding home, he was thrown violently from his horse and broke his neck. It was after this day Francis Taverner never saw the ghost of James Haddock again. The tale of the ghost and everything that came with it was the talk of the town and reached all corners of Ireland. It was then that Bishop Jeremy Taylor put it in writing that the ghost was true. The bishop said that James Haddock's ghost was the only ghost who ever answered a summons in the court of law. James Haddock was buried in Dronbeg Parish Church Courtyard in the 17th century. It is said throughout history that his tombstone will never ever stand up straight, even when it is moved upright it just falls over. To this day it lies in moss and dirt is the reason the tombstone doesn't stand upright. A message from James. Is he trying to tell us something? Oh 